Thank you for joining us. This is Salt and Light Baptist Church, and I am Pastor Justin Walker. We're glad to have you here today. We're going through the book of Genesis. It's a book of foundations, not only the foundations of God's Word, but the foundations of the entire world in which we live. And we see Genesis divided into two major sections. The first is in the first 11 chapters. It's the creation of the world. It's the fall of man. It's the global flood of Noah. It's the dispersion where men are scattered abroad across the earth. And then the Bible will zoom in in chapters 12 through 50, the Bible zooms in the stories into Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. And so grab a Bible and come along with us today as we continue our study through Genesis. We're going to take just a little bit of time today and see how far the Lord can get us through this. So grab Genesis chapter 14. And uh, I want to tell you, when I was uh, about 18 years old, I was working in a restaurant. I was uh, up in Hurstbourne Parkway. On, at Arby's there on Hurstbourne, right across the street from the McDonald's. And it was real busy at times. And, and there was one day, it was just super busy in there. And this guy comes up to me and he says, wow, you, you seem to handle stress pretty well. And I said, well, thank you, I guess. And he said, I, I assume you don't wanna be a, a fast food manager for the rest of your life. And I said, no, I, I don't. And he said, well, I might have a business proposition for you. Okay, I like that. I mean, okay, what do you, what do you got? And he says, well, uh, there's a new, by the way, this was when I was 18, okay? So this was in the days of like AOL, okay? Remember when like AOL had like 1.0, 2.0, like everything? So there's like AOL at that time. This guy says, there's a new high-speed internet coming to Louisville. And uh, I think that you might be a good fit for our company. He said, the president of that company is coming in to meet us. And uh, he's gonna be here some days this week. And how about I introduce you to this guy? I said, whoa, okay. And so I exchanged numbers with the guy and later in the week he calls me and he says, okay, he's gonna be in at whatever such and such date. And how about we meet, there's a Starbucks there right beside you. How about you meet me at the Starbucks and we'll, we'll meet him together. I'll just introduce you to this guy, okay? And then he goes, to get, takes it even further. He says, now, Justin, I'm sticking my neck out for you. I don't hardly know you. Don't come, don't come in there slumming it. You, you put on nice clothes, get a nice shirt, nice tie, put on a jacket. Like, this isn't, this isn't a joke, this is serious. So take it seriously. I'm like 18 years old, this guy's a little bit older than me. And uh, he says, this guy is one of the youngest multimillionaires in America today. Do not, do not mess this up, you've got an opportunity. So I did what any good business person would do. And I went to TJ Maxx and I got me, a, that's, that's funny. <laughs> and I got me a shirt and a box with a tie uh, together because that's what I could afford for $17. And I put that thing on like I was something special. And I went to Starbucks and I was gonna meet this guy. And I met the first guy, the guy that I talked with at Arby's that day and called me and, and we're just having a nice conversation. And uh, then he, said, he gets a text and he says, oh, he, he's here, let me go get him. And, uh, and I'll bring him in and introduce you. So he goes out and he gets this guy. I thought this guy could have been like 16 years old when he walks him in. I thought, man, he really is young. And he sits this guy down in front of me and the guy, I promise you, couldn't make this stuff up, pulls out a piece of like yellow copy paper and unfolds a flyer. And he hands me this flyer. And 15 minutes later, I'd been amway He said, some of you don't know what Amway is, but it's, he says to me, uh, for a thousand dollars, I pay him $1,000. This is a good business proposition for somebody. <laughs> so he says, I pay him $1,000 and I could sell Xnet. But you don't wanna be the one selling Xnet. That's like door to door stuff. And that's, you know, sales calls. You don't want that. No, no, no. For $6,000, you can sell the rights to sell Xnet and other people would be under you and you could get a commission. And he just went on spiel. And by the, by the time 15 minutes was over, I was mad because I'd spent $17 on a shirt and tie. Okay, I was ticked. And I went to this, I, I looked at, I remember I looked at this guy, I was just red in the face mad. And I said to him, I said, that is not a business proposition. That's a Ponzi scheme. Like I don't, if it's a good company, I don't have to pay you money. Yeah, that's why you hire people. If you're, making, if you're such a millionaire, you pay me to work for you. That's the way, that, that's the way business works. I'm not gonna pay you $6,000 to sell the right to sell Xnet. And I was so mad, I marched out of that place and I got in my car and I'm sitting there outside of Starbucks and I had a Nextel phone. Some of you remember those, I had a walkie talkie. And so I walkied Sarah and I was telling her about how these guys tricked me. And I looked over and I promise you the two guys left together and they got up into a beat up old Honda sitting in it together. He'd been waiting in the car the whole time. They just, the, the whole thing was, a sham. And what I'm telling you that for is this. That's exactly what the world does to us. 
the world paints us a picture that makes us desire. It's, the, it's, that, it's that lust of the eyes that we look at it and we want it. We think, oh, that would be great. But then when we get into it, we find out it's not exactly what we thought it might be. Now we go all the way through the Bible here. So we're in Genesis chapter 14. And some of you remember where we've been with Abram and Lot and the conflict that they had last week. So we're picking up after that. Lot, remember what Lot did? Abraham and Lot separated because they were fighting. The herdsmen were fighting. And so Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. There's gonna be some weird names and weird places. Look past that and I promise we'll make some good points. Look at this with me. Genesis 14 and verse one. Did you get that? All right, Genesis chapter 14 and verse one says this, and it came to pass, and by the way, if I mess these names up, all right, look, y'all get up here and try to, you say nothing, okay? You just tell me I did a great job. These are, di- these are difficult. All right, so, and it came to pass in the days of Am- Amraphel, the king of Shinar, Arioch, the king of Eleazar, Chador Laomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, Berish, king of Gomorrah, Sanab, king of Adma, Shemibar, king of Zeboim, and king of Bela, that is Zor. All these joined together in the valley of Sidom, that is the salt sea. 12 years they served Chador Laomer, and in the 13th year they rebelled. In the 14th year, Chador Laomer and the kings that were with him came and attacked Raphaim in Ashtaroth, Kernaim, the Zuzim in Ham, and Emim in Shiva, Kerjath the Theim and the Horites and their mountains and of Seir as far as El Paran, and which is in the which is by the wilderness. And I'm in verse seven. If I've lost you in all that, then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and they attacked the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who dwell in, Hez, in Hezazon Tamar. In verse eight, the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, the king of Bela, that is Zor, went out and joined to gather in the battle in the valley of Siddim against Chador Laomer, king of Edom, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Ariok, king of Eleazar. Now, this, this will sum it up for you, ready? Four kings against five kings. Four kings against five. Verse 10. Now in the valley of Sidom was full of asphalt pits and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there and the remainder fled to the mountains and then they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their provisions and went their way. And look at verse 12. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and get our hearts ready. Heavenly Father, we ask you to open up our our hearts to your word. Father, we're human, we're finite, we're distracted. We wanna hear from you and we pray that we could. And we know, Lord, that if we ask you for wisdom that you give liberally and upbraideth not. So Father, we ask you for wisdom right now about your word. We ask you that we would encounter you. We ask you that we would hear from, from you. And Father, we ask you that whatever you want from us, that you would lead us to it. We humble ourselves before you and admit that we need you more than anything in this entire world. And so would you please reveal yourself to us in Jesus' name, amen. All right, look, I'm not gonna read all those names again because I got through it once without stuttering way too bad. So we're not, we're not hitting them again, but you, we're gonna sum this up, okay? There's four kings led by one particular guy, mostly. His name is Chador Laomer, okay? So four kings with one guy, Chador Laomer. You got that? Then there's five kings, and that includes Sodom and Gomorrah, Bera and Berish, okay? There's this four kings with Chador Laomer, five kings with Bera and Berish, that's Sodom and Gomorrah. Four kings attack five kings, and the five kings submit to them for 12 years. For 12 years, the five kings are bowing down to the four kings and they're giving them what they want. So when they say they want land, the five kings have to give the land. When they say they want servants, the five kings have to give their people and give them servants. When the, five king, when the four kings say that they want uh, tribute, that they want taxes, the five kings have to pay taxes to the four kings. You got the story? That happens for 12 years. At the 12 year mark, five kings say, no more, we're done with this. We don't want this. And they start to rebel against the four kings. And by the time the 14th year comes around, the five kings come up to attack the four kings. You with it? Sodom and Gomorrah, five kings. They come to attack Chador, Laomer, and the four kings. We're still with the story, right? The four kings whoop the snot out of the five kings. 
there's some asphalt pits out there and the five kings go running and some of them in their kingdoms, some of them go running and they're literally falling in the asphalt pits. The ones that don't die there on the battlefield, they're running to the mountains. They're trying to get their people out of the cities and the four kings come in and they take over all the cities of the five kings and start taking the people and the stuff and pillaging from the five kings. So five kings rebelled and now they, they didn't win the rebellion. And so the four kings are taking over. Do you get that? Do you understand where the story is there? That's the story that happened. Four kings versus five kings and the five kings lost and they went running. And then you get to that last verse in verse 12 and you see something very important. Lot was there. Wait a second, hold up. First of all, I want you all to know this, that that really happened. And that's not a, like I'm using my hand to, to, to gesture so that we can understand, but you need to understand that this was a world war. This isn't a small thing. You've got five kingdoms versus four kingdoms. This is a big deal. This is a huge battle that is raging. This isn't a small deal. The four kings just whooped the five kings. The whole layout of the land is gonna look completely different. The five kings went running, but somehow by the time we get to verse 12, We've circled back around and now we see Lot. Remember Lot and Abram had a conflict. I wanna tell you that today, as much as that's a real story, that really happened. If you ever look at me and say, the Bible is just allegories, I'll never agree with you. We'll, I'll, I'll talk with you till we're, I'll talk all day. I'm telling you, the Bible's not allegories. That really happened, but it does make a really good point. This paints a perfect picture of the world for us. See, I don't see that, it just look like a war that happened. No, it paints a real good picture of the world and I'll show you how. First of all, will you remember this with me from last week? And by the way, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna ask for another offering. We won't even put the graphic back up, okay? This is just extra, no extra, that's funny, come on. No extra charge, okay? This is why it's important to go through the whole Bible because you miss this context if you don't. You don't get this stuff. Check this out. Remember what happened with the conflict? Abram and Lot were arguing because there wasn't enough what? You say, it starts with an L, ends with and. Land, yeah. There wasn't enough land. That's, uh, no, you, you got it. <laughs> there wasn't enough land. So they were arguing and fighting. The herdsmen were fighting and Abram and Lot were fighting. And Abram says, let's, let, let's not have any strife between us. Lot, choose whatever you want. So Lot, looking for enough land, where did Lot go? Towards Sodom. Remember what it said, what the Bible said? The Bible said that the land there looked like the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Lord. It looked really nice. So nice that it made Lot wanna choose it. And by the way, that's exactly how the world is. The world will paint this picture that says it looks lovely. It always looks good in the beginning. My favorite illustration here, and I'm gonna use it because some of you are new and you don't know it. My favorite illustration, this is a beer commercial. There's all these good looking people with beers on the beach and they're dancing and they're whatever. I know people who drink beer. They don't look like that. <laughs> they don't look like that. You know I'm right. I know people drink a lot of beer and they don't look like that. Listen, the world looks good. The picture of the world is pretty. It's tempting. Lot looked down that way and he saw it. It was green and it was, it was luscious and he had herds. Now remember, he's going to get land, right? But when I got to verse 12, wait a second. When I got to verse 12, what just happened? They took Lot also, Abram's brother, Abram's brother's son, wait, 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 who dwelt in Sodom. They were fighting over land. So Lot went to go get more land. When we ended chapter 13, Lot was going to get more land in the, in the luscious area down towards Sodom, but now he's not living in the pasture land, is he? Ah, uh, because the world does this. Not only does it look nice, the world draws you in. Oh, look how nice it looks. I, I know, honey, I know Sodom, pro, or excuse me, Lot probably says to his wife, I know Sodom is, I know that they're wicked people in there, but, but they're nice. What do you, how do you think he got there? Do you think one day he just packed up and said, you know what, forget the herds, let's go into the city? No, probably said, well, we need some supplies for the house. And so they probably went in for supplies. I'm sure that every now and then they probably wanted a break from the sheep. And so they probably went maybe to a, a local restaurant or a pub, or they probably, maybe they even stayed in an inn in the city. Well, it's late and we don't want to make the way all the way back out to the pasture. So we'll just stay here a couple of days. And they probably made some friends and they probably had dinner at somebody's house. They probably served with some other people there in the city. And before you know it, here we go. Are you ready? 
the world is just drawing them in. It looked really nice. Now, somewhere in there, Lot ends up joining Sodom. And overall, what was happening in Sodom for 12 years? Are you sticking with this? For 12 years, they were serving Chador Laomer. See, it looked really nice. And then they started calling him in. And Lot makes his way into the city. And, and that's not me saying that they're, that they're wicked. I mean, that's what the Bible says. If you went back to Genesis 13 and verse 13, 13 and 13 says, but the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. And yet Lot had made his way in and he started camping there. He started staying there. And now he was living there and he was living among all the people of Sodom. And then what happened? The war breaks out and he's totally caught. Not only does the war break out and he's caught in the middle of it, somewhere in that 12 years, Lot moves to Sodom. Sodom gets taken over by Chador Laomer. They try to rebel. Lot gets caught in the middle and he gets carried away because that's exactly what happens. The world looks really nice. Then it starts drawing you in. And then when you step inside, this is the last point I want everybody to get. To. You ready? It always hurts you. Listen, the system of the world, it always paints a pretty picture. And right now, are you ready for me to get real serious about today? Right now, the world is painting some pretty pictures with some real ugly paint. And the world is calling us to join in the, in the chaos and in the argument. And it, it, the world is literally on fire and yet it's using some really nice language and saying, doesn't, can I, can I just get serious? Can we do it? Yeah, I hope you're ready. Because I'm going to, I wasn't gonna stop even if you didn't amen me. The world right now is claiming that what they're doing is out of love, but does what they're, what they're doing, does it look like love? It's supposed to be out of care, but does it look like care? Because this is what the world does. And by the way, don't think that, that you're free from it because from the world's perspective, it doesn't matter who you are. Whether it was the four kings attacking the five kings or whether it was the people getting caught up in the middle of it or the five kings going back against the four kings, the world, the system of the world always leaves you in the same place. Everybody gets hurt. I remember um, I was at a youth camp. I was about 15 years old. It was my first youth church camp. And they had this really great pastor. They had these great youth services. And all of, the, all of the churches, the youth pastors had been encouraging the youth that when we had chapel, there was a chapel service every day of that week. And so they encouraged us that when we had chapel service, that we should all dress nice that we should all put on like a nice button up shirt and put on some jeans. And we were all in camp clothes all week, but you know, take those off and put on some nice clothes and come to worship. And so we did. And so the camp pastor, he says to the group of, of teens that are all dressing nice, he tells us all that we were there, it was Monday and then Tuesday. And Tuesday night, this is what he said. He said, well, he said, guys, we, we look around and we see that some of you can dress nice, but some of you can't. Some of you can't dress nice. He said, I, I don't know, maybe you didn't get to pack, maybe you didn't know and you didn't pack nice clothes. But he says to the group of children who are dressing nice, he says, guys, what we're asking of you would be this, maybe just consider, you know, bring it down a notch so that everybody gets to feel included and nobody feels, nobody feels ostracized. That's what we really want. We wanna make sure that everybody feels included. You guys are, are dressing nice, but there's some kids who maybe, maybe they didn't have nice clothes or they, didn't, they just didn't bring them, but let's try to dress, dress it down a little bit so that everybody feels comfortable. And so over the course of the next two days, we went from like dressing nice that now kids are wearing like swim trunks, no shirt, flip flops coming into worship service. And you know, we're having a good time in worship. And, uh, and it happened by Thursday night that all of the kids who are dressing like way down, they looked at all the kids who were dressing up and they start kind of chastising them. Well, you all know what he said. You all, you all, his name was Mark. You all remember what Mark said. Mark said we were supposed to dress down to make everybody feel comfortable. And they started pointing fingers saying, now you guys are making everybody feel uncomfortable. And I remember that night, I'll never forget. Mark came out on the stage and this is what he did. He opened his sermon with this. He went, ha, you did exactly, you did exactly what the world does. All of you who now dress down are pointing fingers at the ones who are dressing up. Before we were dressing up and we said you were pointing fingers at the ones dressing down. It's the way the world always works. It doesn't matter which side you pick. They're all gonna get hurt. 
Because the answer is not found in the system of the world. So I'm gonna get real plain, you ready? If you're looking to fix the police, go ahead and try to fix them, it's not gonna fix the problem. If you're looking to, to take care of racism, it's not gonna fix the problem. You focus on the systems of the world and all you're going to get is more worldly problems because if you join one side, you're gonna point the fingers at the other side. Friends, listen, I didn't check my time because I know we're long today. I don't have time to go through the rest of the chapter, but here's what I wanna end with today and I want you all to hear this, listen to me. There is answer in only one person and his name is Christ. Can I use some words that are being thrown around right now? Christ will free you from oppression. If you, if, you want the, if you want the same president or a new president to free you from oppression, it's not really gonna work because you might get one group out, but you'll put another in. See, there's no freedom from oppression from my president. And I'm, listen, I don't care who you are. I don't care how mad I make you. I stand with my president. I stand with my police and I stand with people. I love people and I love God. And I know that God put us under a government and I'm not, we're not gonna sit here and demolish our country or our government. That's a wrong thing to do. And we're not gonna demolish one group of people. That's a wrong thing to do. Have you noticed what I'm saying to you? Both are wrong because both are systems of the world. What God is calling you is not into the world. He's calling you out of the world. I said I was gonna be done, but I got stuff. I gotta do it. So hang on, just, just wait with me, right? I own a business. Imagine with me if at my business, a man came and he worked for me and he got caught stealing. I catch, a, a guy's working for me and I catch the guy stealing. And now imagine with me, if I went to him and I said, I caught you stealing. How much did you steal from me? And he puts his head down in shame. Just imagine with me if he says, I stole about $5,000. Now, what would it look like if I looked at him and I went, well, I really need to help you out. So next year, limit yourself, only steal $4,000 from me next year. And then the year after that, we'll cut you down again. And you can only, you're only allowed to steal 3,000 the following year. And then a year after that, 2,000, you can only steal 2,000. By the time we get to five years, you won't even need to steal from me anymore. All right, right, thank you. That's the, that's the reaction I wanted. If, if I was to do that, would you not say that's foolish? You know what the Bible says? Let him who steals, steal no more. Listen, God is not calling you to reduce the amount of world. God is calling you out of the world and into himself. Something that's totally different than the world. Now I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, I said I was gonna be done, but look at me. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about flesh and blood. Listen to me. Remember Nicodemus came to Jesus by night? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And when he came to Jesus, he wanted to know what he should do to be saved. And Jesus said, you've gotta be born again. And Nicodemus, he got flesh and blood in his mind. And he said, what am I supposed to do? Crawl up into my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, no, that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. And what God is calling from you today is to be born of spirit. The system of the world will never fix it, but you can be born again in him. And he gives you a new spirit and a new, that's why Jesus died. Jesus Christ hung on a cross and he paid for your sins. You couldn't pay for him, but he did. And he who paid for your sins was buried in a tomb and he rose three days later and he ascended to the father. And even today he is offering for you to be saved. Do you understand when we say saved, we mean out of the world, not less of it, not $4,000, not $3,000, no more. It's not about the world. It's about him who's calling you out of it. Would you put your faith in him and trust in him to save you? That's where we'll close today. Let's all stand up on our feet and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we turn to you in Jesus' name and we ask you right now, that, Lord, I know things are different in our service, but you remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, Father, we ask you in this moment that you would take over, that you would take our hearts and that you would draw us unto yourself and show us where the real battle actually is. That it is, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That this is a spiritual battle. And Father, that we can only win by siding with you. And so, Father, I just pray that right now you would draw us unto yourself. And I don't know who's in the building. I don't know the hearts of those who are here. But Father, I ask you that if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their savior, that they would make their hearts right with you, make their lives right with you right now. Father, I pray for salvation to be had.
I pray that not one person would leave this place without knowing, completely knowing that the gates of hell cannot prevail against them and that they are safe in your hands. That no man can pluck them out, that no sin could ever damn them. Father, would you please grab a hold of our hearts and draw us unto yourself who saves us? Would you draw us to your salvation in Jesus' name? Amen. Hey, you made it all the way through the sermon. Thanks so much for sticking with us. Don't forget you can find all of our sermons at saltandlightbaptist.com slash media. You can join us live on Sunday morning on Facebook or at saltandlightbaptist.com slash live. We'll see you next week.